Let's enter the exotic world of OTC derivatives, over-the-counter derivatives, with the second video on OTC derivatives. The first, one, the first video was on forward contracts. The second video is on swaps. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. In today's video, we're going to take a look at four essential features of a swap product in capital markets. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. If you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate actions, trade life cycle, and OTC derivatives, then do subscribe to my YouTube channel where I provide research-rich content on these topics. If you are interested to participate in cute little quizzes that I give every day on the community page, then smash that bell icon so that you get notifications of the latest videos and these quizzes. The derivatives are of two types, exchange traded derivatives and OTC derivatives. Exchange traded derivatives, also called as listed derivatives, could be futures and options which get traded on NYSE, NSE, BSE, etc. OTC derivatives, on the other hand, are extremely customized to meet the requirements of the two counterparties to the trade and these could be swaps, forwards and so on. Let's understand what are swaps. Swaps are a derivative product that is customized to the requirements of the two counterparties and therefore one of the most essential features of a swap is like all derivatives it is based on an underlying asset the technical definition of a derivative is that a derivative is a financial product whose price is derived from the price of the underlying asset in the same way the swap is also a separate derivative instrument and it is based on an underlying asset what could the underlying asset be? The underlying asset could be interest rates and therefore you can have an interest rate swap for exchanging fixed for floating or floating for fixed. A separate video will be made on interest rate swaps. It could also be a currency swap when we're exchanging currencies over a period of time. Okay. The second feature of swaps is that there is something called as a principal amount also called as a notional amount. The notional amount or the contract value is never exchanged or rarely ex gets exchanged at the time of entering into the contract and therefore the notional amount doesn't even have to be returned on maturity. So we understand that the principal amount or the notional amount never gets exchanged or rarely gets exchanged and returned in swaps. Then what is the use of having a notional amount? Why do we have a notional amount for swaps? The reason we have a notional amount for swaps is because we want to calculate all the cash flows based on the notional amount. Okay, so both the parties to the contract will have the same notional amount, all right, which is going to be the contract value or the principal amount. All the cash flows are based on the principal or the notional amount. So that completes two features of swaps. The third feature of swaps is it's an exchange of cash flows. Okay, this exchange of cash flows where there is one side of a swap trade in technical financial language is called as a leg of the swap. Okay, this leg could be the fixed leg or the floating leg in the case of an interest rate swap. It could be a dollar euro leg in the case of a currency swap, etc. What does this leg do? This leg shows what is the contractual obligation of the counterparty to the trade, And therefore, it also mentions the payment frequency. All these terms are mentioned in the contract that is entered into between the two counterparties. And this payment frequency of the cash flows could either be quarterly, semi-annually or even annually. So it is very important to define what is the leg of a swap. And the final fourth feature of a swap, if you don't have, if you don't mention this in your interview, then the chances that you're going to crack the interview is very, very low. So do remember that in a swap, the relationship of the two counterparties is receiver and payer, not buyer and seller. Because somebody is paying and receiving cash flows which are of a different nature. For example, in an interest rate swap, if it is a payer of fixed interest rate, that means they are receiving floating interest rate. If the counterparty is receiving fixed interest rate, that means they are paying floating interest rate. Therefore, the receiver-payer relationship between the two counterparties is very, very critical to understand. In summary, 
Let us now understand the four essential features of a swap. First one, a swap like all derivative products is based on the price of the underlying asset. The underlying asset could be interest rates or currencies. It could be equities also. The swap could be is based on the principal amount, also called as a notional amount, which rarely or never gets exchanged during the swap. There is an exchange only of cash flows at predetermined intervals. These are netted payments. And finally, the relationship between the two counterparties is that of a receiver and a payer and not a buyer or a seller. Thank you everybody for watching in this video and if you lack such content, do like my channel, subscribe to it and do share it with your friends. Thank you so much because here we will keep learning and keep growing.